Hello, and welcome to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm Bobby C., and I want to welcome you here today. We are live from Hubie's Restaurant and Tavern here on Avenue A in Turner's Falls. They're also one of the sponsors of our show, and they've been with us since the beginning. I want to thank the owner, Sean Hubert, and his wife, Lynn, for having us here today. I also want to be able to thank a couple of wonderful guys that are with me here today, Chris Collins and Jeff Terrell. We are the three guys who do the high school basketball broadcast on Bear Country 95.3 during the winter season. And also, it's wonderful because we are the guys who get a chance to put a pulse on what is going on here with the local basketball. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about here today. I want to thank our sponsors, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Burniston, also Denny's Pantry, located on Burniston Road in Greenfield, and by Lisa Albert of Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield. Chris, Jeff, welcome aboard, guys. Good to be here. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, this is the time of year where we start getting into the winter sports season, and usually after the first of the year is when all the league play begins. You don't see a lot of the independence going on now, and things really start to heat up as the kids have got to get ready for their 10 wins to be able to make it to the playoffs. Yep, the race is on. A couple of teams are already off to a great start uh, towards uh, setting themselves up for the postseason, but I, I think the key theme this year is uh, all these new players. I mean, there are a lot of really, really young basketball players out of the uh, hard course this winter. I think the power league this year in Inner County, or, excuse me, in uh, the Hampshire League is the South. I think if you look at those Southern teams, uh, the Hopkins, the Pioneer team, I mean, that's where I think where the class, I think, is of the boys' division. Not to say that the North Division isn't, but I think you've got some, like you said, some rebuilding going on in some of those programs. Well, you know, I was looking at some of the teams and scoring and where the offense has been, and it is still with the Hopkins, and it still is with the Marhars. They're still putting up the big numbers, but you're seeing teams like Mohawk that uh, are just struggling to put the ball in the net. Even Greenfield's having trouble this year putting the ball in the net, too, and those are the teams that could be struggling this season. Well, in Mohawk's case, it's a new program. you got a new coach, you've got a new style, new philosophy, and kids have to be able to buy into that, and they have to have time the gel. I don't think that they are, you know, as powerful as they've been in past years, but that's been a program that's sort of seesaw the last few years, and I think right now they're on the downside, but they could come back up. And I think with Greenfield, uh, again, very early in the season, but you know, they had the they had the ingredients for a strong team the last couple of years. They had a really good inside-outside game. Connor Joy as their primary point guard, a couple of other shooters from the outside, and then of course they have Kevin Mendez uh, doing a lot of damage down low. Uh, but with that crew, zero tournament appearances. So that was a disappointment. So now they're going to go in a different direction. And the key will be, not only for Greenfield, but for all these teams with all these new kids, is how quickly can they buy into the coach's system and, and gel, just showing that they can uh, gel and really make a run at some of the higher ups in the league or else it could be a really long season for both of those teams and a few others too. Well you know when I was looking at the way Greenfield played last night where they had a game against Pioneer I will tell you that they just got totally outplayed. They got out hustled and as we know if you watch a Scotty Fair coach team they play really good defense and the defense that they played against Greenfield was really tenacious. They were like in their pockets and I got to give that to conditioning. I think that they've done a very good job conditioning themselves. In Greenfield, they just looked like they were lost last night. And you can't get beat by 30 points and expect that that's going to be something really good for your team to be able to start off the season with. That's a tough loss for them. It is. I think it's, it, you know, now, now it's where do we go from here? I mean, you, you, you can bounce back because this is a, as much mental as it can be physical. I mean, they, listen, they, they don't have the talent that they had last year. But that does not mean that they can't still produce some victories. They have to do it a different kind of way. Last night was not an ex the last night was an example of how not to do that. So now can they flip the script? Who knows? Well, they've also got a couple of new players too. They've got the new point guard that just came up from Florida. Yeah. Well I thought it was a pretty good athlete. Good play, when, yeah. when we saw them play against Franklin Tech, that was the first game of the season and I thought they looked like they were in mid season form. The problem with Greenfield historically I think has been right here. I think that they their their heads aren't always into the game. I think what we've seen in the past We've seen a, front, a Greenfield team that starts off strong, has a second quarter swoon, then struggles the final two quarters to get back into the game. I didn't see the Pioneer game, but I'm guessing that was probably part of the dynamic. Yeah, matter of fact, that's exactly what happened. And <laughs> Pioneer definitely was draining threes, and nobody was getting out to, to take care of it. You know, you look at Mike Menard, and Mike Menard, he banged like three or four threes, and that was huge. And, you know, that's 12 points right there. 
And when you're playing really good defense like Pioneer was playing against Greenfield, they weren't able to respond and they were really sloppy. And Jonathan Roman, the kid that they got that's, that came up, the thing is with him is, is he, he really isn't as good as I thought he was going to be after watching a couple more games. I think he's still got a lot of growing to do. But I also think that if he's going to be the guy who's going to be your point guard, you've got to show that you're going to be a leader. And I don't see any leadership out of this kid at all right One now. of the things I noticed in the Tech game was when they pressed Roman, he folded. He had a very tough time against the press. If he's handling the ball and you press Greenfield, you're going to have problems because he, when he gets doubled in the backcourt, he doesn't know what to do with the ball, it seems like. I think when, once he gets free, if he gets you know, some daylight and gets a, a look at the hoop, he's got great, yep. great, great skills going toward the basket. It's getting out of the backcourt that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. when you're turning it over in the backcourt, of course, against a good team, they'll convert your def- your offensive lapses into into points going the other way. And next thing you know, the other team's on a 12-0 run, and usually it's a ball game. And that's what happened last year. And if you don't defend the perimeter against Pioneer, I don't care what team you are, if the Panthers can shoot like that, they're going to kill you every time because yeah. they've always been able to stick it from the outside. And I will tell you that Brendan Iman, he must have had six blocks last night, and they were all 100% clean. That is a big boy right there. Well, he's one of those players that he's sort of a sleeper. You know, you don't hear a lot about him until he comes up huge in a game. Now, there are other players, you know, big men like Karsten Carey from Frontier, uh, like the kid from Turner's Falls, uh, the sophomore. I mean, when you those guys you hear a lot about, but Iman, when he has a big game, he has a big game. Well, he's had, he's had trouble staying healthy during his career, but when healthy, now... He, all he wanted was an opportunity to show he what he can do. He looked and really good last night, yeah. guys. He and looked he's doing really good. Yeah. And like you said, you were talking about Anthony Peterson from yes. Turner's. He has made a name for himself right now. And Carson Carey has made a name for himself. Thing is, you think about Greenfield, and it's really there really isn't a name that really stands out as their main standout player. I mean, yes, they have Owen Phelps. They have Hunter Campbell. They have Colin Cloutier. They have Sewell. They got guys who can who can do something, but there's not like a big name to to be like out in your face. And really for Pioneer, Mike Menard's really turned himself to be a much better player this year. I can see that he's really worked on his game. Carl Wheeler looked really good last night for them. And I'll tell you, the one who looked a little out of sync last night was Garrett Cody. Hmm. He did. He looked a little, uh, looked like he was rushing too much. Like almost like he was, he was his feet were, were faster than his brain. And sometimes that happens in basketball, guys. Well, this is one thing that's good this year is this is a good year for pivot men. There's a lot of good big men. And, you know, you, th- you talk about Greenfield not having a signature star. You know, what if Kevin Mendez were a senior this year? I mean, he would probably be tearing it up inside. But there's a lot of good inside players. And I think that in, in Frontier's case, they've got two Carey brothers, one a youngin, and, and then, of course, there's Karsten. And those guys are out there, and they're like Twin Towers. So, I mean, there, there is some good talent in the paint. The question is, can anybody get the ball? And that's the key. Well, probably, Chris, the high water mark in terms of great players and great teams for us since you and I have been doing the games. It's, and it's hard to believe that it was 10 years ago. But the 07 08 season, where you had the four headed monster in the Hampshire League battling every night, you had a great Turner's Falls team, a great Pioneer team, a great Mohawk team and our great frontier team that ultimately went on to win a state championship that year. It's hard to believe that that was a decade ago. But the common element, among other things, was they had, they had great men down low. But they had the guys that could get the ball. And what, what a year that was. A completely different situation now. It's the flip. We have some big men, but we have so many young teams. But that, that, that 07 08 season was incredible. Yeah, th- there's a lot of parity in this league this year. But it's, it's what I call parody of an experience. Yeah. You've got a lot of good athletes without a lot of experience, and you've got coaches trying to, to build programs with kids that they're sort of cobbling together from JV players last year to returning players this year, and that's always a challenge. But as we move down the line of the season, you would expect some of these teams to gel a little bit better than they have. You know, it's funny. If you go back, <laughs> I just can't believe that I'm going back and doing that flashback with Grand Donico and the Clark brothers and thinking about the guys up at Pioneer oh, with, yeah. 
Clapatico and uh, and of course you had Cody Snow and yeah. Matt Llewellyn. And then you had Matt Llewellyn. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and, you, and then you had Tyler Lennox and they had the Field oh Brothers. And, and then you had Big Ed Carter. Big Ed Carter. It was a great era. It was a great era. Story Buck yeah. and those guys. What a great what a great time for basketball that was. And that was And this can grow to be that way. I mean, Anthony Peterson is is so much fun to watch because he has the mix of skill and also just that exuberance. I mean, he, he, he is just, I mean, you know how he's feeling when he's out there. And some, in the last year, there were times I'm like, okay, you really got to kind of rein that in a little bit. But on the other hand, you, you do want to unleash at times. So he is really fun and uh, fun to watch. And a very different demeanor is carried down at uh, down, down at Frontier, but equally effective. And I'm going to have fun watching these guys over these I mean, Peterson's years. only a sophomore. Let's not forget that. Right. He yeah, is. is a junior. And it, I was just going to tell you that, as you know, Chris, because you've been carrying the games from Jeff as well, but the folks don't. But Carson Carey is only a junior, folks. So he's coming back next year. I was looking at some of the kids that are juniors here, and I'm pretty impressed. I I think Hunter Campbell, um, I think Hunter can do really well um, next year. I think that this year is going to be a really good year for him to hopefully build some leadership as a junior for this team. Him and Owen Phelps, I'm hoping that they're going to be able to take over and be able to be the leaders that they need for Greenfield. I was looking at this um, team from Mohawk, and they're mainly senior related right now for scoring, at least. But Jackson Hicks will be back as a senior next year for them. Um, their main stars for Pioneer are seniors, which is Iman, Bernard, and Wheeler, if you look at them. But Karsten, you got him and Alex Sharp that are both going to come back next year. All right? But really, when you think about teams that are still young, look at this tech team. You got Farrick, who is their senior, so he'll be gone. But you got Garrett Cole, the big kid that's down low. Very, Another big kid. Very, very good. He played good really well, Jeffrey, yeah. in the game against Greenfield. He looked very effective, all right? You got Max Arrest, he's back again, so he's going to get back on his wheels again because he took the year off last year due to a circumstance that I totally understand. And then Jared Bergman, and Bergman's going to be back next year too. Yep. Now for Turners, you got Anthony Peterson, sophomore, you got Chase Novak coming back, and you got Lavin coming back next year as a senior too. And the only one that's a senior out of their group is Jimmy Vaughn. And there's a kid that you got to give a lot of credit to. Well, Jimmy Vaughn has played really, really well. When he gets hot and he gets open, he, he'll kill you. And he did it the other night. He, he had 15, it's like 5-3, yeah. some ridiculous number. Yeah. I mean, that kid, when he gets, but he's got to get hot, that's the key. The game we saw, he wasn't real hot. Right, yeah. He was kind of a bit player. But if he starts really getting, getting some open looks, he yeah. can really turn a game he around. He really can. And I'm going to tell you what. Jimmy Vaughn really surprised me in the game that we ended up doing at Turner's. It was Chris and I. No, it was me and Hubie. Hubie and I did the game together. Yeah, yeah. And we were saying how Jimmy Vaughn just was on fire. Well, once, once he lost that mask. Yeah. You know, yeah. Once he, once, I, don't, I don't think and he, he talked. And he talked time. about that with Hubie. Yeah. He said that he didn't like yeah. having that mask on. Yeah. You know? But it was necessary. Then with Turner's, Turner's Falls is really intriguing because they are a sneaky good team, but they they blow hot and cold guys. They, they do they, blow they, hot and cold. They, you know, yeah. they can be a, a lot more uh, consistent, which is obviously that's what Molly's aiming for in the kids. Yeah. Uh, they're an interesting they're an interesting team. They could severely make a run here, but it depends on if they can maintain that consistency. But I'm going to tell you another problem too, and and you know, and you don't like to see this happen, but it does happen in sports, and it's happened for years. Is you get the kid who you think could be a really big a piece of a puzzle. And then his own personal life gets in the way and things change. And I'm going to say with last year's Turner's team that what happened with Ovo was a huge yeah. loss for them last year. They really needed Ovo last year. Yeah. Obachowski and Obachowski was, was a big part of that team. And when he ended up having to be, when he was told he couldn't play the rest of the year, that really hurt that team. It really did. This year, they were trying to bring in Sanders. And when Sanders decided that he wanted to quit school, now there's another kid who went down, not only on basketball, but also for the football team, too. So, you know, sometimes you get that kid who's part of the puzzle that they think is going to be able to help the team, and things do change, guys. Yeah, and, and also, let's not forget Javonia Williams, who's down with an ankle injury right now for Turner's. This was going to be a year of redemption for him. I mean, Javonia's had this problem getting into foul trouble, a little bit out of control at times, but obviously has skills, obviously has ability, and was, this was going to be his year. And he can still make it come in. He'll still be back probably in four weeks or so. So, I mean, the second half, he could be, he could be a player. But, yeah, I think Jeff's right. I think Turner's is one of those sleeper teams that if they start putting it together 
getting some consistency, getting some chemistry going, they're going to surprise some people in the second half of the season. And, you know, I really like this Chase Novak kid, but he's got to keep his nose clean, you know, and that's the thing that you try to tell these athletes is that, hey, don't get yourself in trouble because if you do, you're hurting your whole team, you know, and Chase is a really good athlete. He really is. He's another kid who's good. And, you know, they're going to need as many of these guys as possible, especially in February, as they start making the run for the tourney. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting league because uh, with the losses down there in Hadley, I mean, Hopkins is still plenty good. Angelo has a, has a program, not a team. Oh, absolutely. But, I, you know, I think they've come back to the pack, and, and, and Mahar seemingly is always there. So it, it's, it's less predictable than it's been in recent years. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Hopkins still, is, you know, you have to account for them. Stole an awful lot of talent down there. But I got to say, it's a, what a great story that is, though. You mentioned he's got a program, not a team. And, and, you know, it's so funny because there was such controversy. He was going to be the heir apparent in Greenfield. Everybody knew it. Everybody figured there was Angelo's team eventually. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen. And Hopkins gave him an opportunity. And, man, you talk about a guy who has taken the ball literally and run. Now, again, he had some hero, you know, top scoring player in the state. And that helps. Yeah, but they still got Morris and they still got Earl. They still got plenty. Of, but I think. It's the way that those guys buy into his system that is going to make that team a perennial contender every year going forward. You know, I was thinking about this, and I'm like, wow, they got Johnny Earl. They got Morrison. They got Seattle. They're all back. They're all seniors. And it seems like these kids have been playing for like 10 yeah, years. It does. I mean, it really does, guys. You know, you really think about it. You're like, still got Seattle. They still got Morrison. And they still got Earl. But let me tell you, little Seattle and little Earl are going to be coming up in that program now. So the the generations just keep going. The beat goes on. It does. It the seems like there's up. always a Seattle somewhere <laughs> in that yeah. mix. Yeah. But, you know, when you go to the other side of – of literally of the county to Mahar, Alt Orange, and you got Sam Paul, and you got Brennan Malu, and you got Matt Jenks. I mean, those are really good, talented kids that have been able to get it done for them. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, Softik is a fantastic yeah. coach as well. He is. And he deserves a lot of credit for what he's been able to do yeah, with that what, program. What I like about him and, and his kids, uh, they they just they don't back down. Even when they go up against a team that seemingly has the better hand, like, like a Hopkins, they, they don't back down. They they'll, don't. They, they'll beat a premier team, and they're not surprised by it. They're like, yeah, we knew we could beat this team, and yeah. then they go and do it. I know. That's, that's really hard to pull well, What's interesting about the North Quabbin dynamic, and I, I have some experience with this because I, I called games over there for a number of years for another station, is they really take the mahar Athol rivalry very, very seriously. I think as much in basketball as in football, and it's amazing mm -hmm. to see the emergence of Mahar and the demergence, if, I, if that's even a word, of Athol. I mean, what has happened to the yeah. Athol program? I mean, that used to be a perennial powerhouse program, and for whatever reason, it's just not been there the last few years. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, we can go back and we can bring out a couple of names, and I'm going to bring one out for you right now, and that is Coach Sullivan for the girls' program at Athol. When Coach Sullivan was there, he was pretty much recruiting these kids as young kids that were going to the YMCA in Athol, and he was a big basketball guy himself. And with Coach Sullivan, his daughter was a great athlete too. Yes. And I think that when you have a coach that really puts a lot into the community, I think that's a big help to you. And I think that that's why Softic has done so well with right. Mar, is I think he's very engaged with that community in Orange, oh, he where is, yeah. I think that Sully was too. Do you feel the same way oh, as yeah, I do? Of course. About yeah. with, with Athol. Well, and I yeah. think that you really need coaches, guys, that are really involved in the community and know what's going on at the younger level, where Angelo Thomas does because of his hoop strive program. Well, okay? Sullivan. So he knows what's going on. Sullivan coached the, the, the Athol boys program 20 years ago. And I remember those great, it was a great matchup between John Waters and, and Sullivan and the Mahar Athol teams. And you're right, Sullivan had his finger on the pulse. He knew the kids were coming up. I'm not entirely sure if that dynamic exists now, but you mentioned Softic, and it's clearly evident, and it's clearly paying off. I mean, the more that these coaches can be invested in the community with these kids at a young age, the better their programs are going to be moving forward. It's just a fact of life. 
it is. And you know, in Mully, the one thing I can say about Mully is, is that when he was the athletic director at Turner's Falls, he was involved with those kids each and every day. Now he's retired, but I still think that he's still knowing all these kids because they're all pretty tight. Yeah. And coaching the softball team, the girls and the boys are really tight at Turner's. Oh, yeah. The athletes are very tight together. So that's helped Mully on the boys' end, seriously. Yeah. And he is a basketball guy. And he brought his boys over last night to watch that Pioneer Greenfield game. And I will tell you, I guarantee that him and Angelo, because they were both there next to each other, were exchanging stories about some of the sloppy play that was played and some of the really good play that was played in that game last night. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. veteran coaches, Mully, I've often said, you can give him a, a minimal amount of talent. It, it, he'll he'll get you 500. I mean, you give him a couple of couple of skilled kids, and they're in the tournament. And if you give him a decent complement of talent, they're going to go to the cage. Like they they've done that several times. Turner's Falls basketball hasn't had those awesome basketball players. You know, with with, with the exception of Liam Ellis, obviously he's kind of in a different category. But right. The rest of it was just complementary players that he knew where to put to succeed. And they made a couple of runs, a couple of great runs. They just were not going to beat those great Hopkins teams. But it, you know, no, who, who and, was? And, you know, when those Hopkins teams were a bunch of really special players. Mm -hmm. And Angelo knew how special these players were. And Angelo wasn't afraid to turn the wrench a little tighter and make it hurt a little more for those kids to step up their game. He wasn't. It's scary to think how close Turner's came to not having Gary Mullins on the bench this year. Yeah, you know, yeah. There was a, a possibility, for health reasons, he wasn't going to be able to coach. I don't know that they would have the chance that they're probably going to have without him. I mean, there are certain coaches that are just special figures. And as you said, the, the, to be a great coach, you have to have players that want to play for you, that want to buy into your system, that have that respect factor. And he always seems to bring out the best in those kids. Well, you know, that's the, here's a situation that's happening, I think, in Greenfield right now, is I'm not sure if those kids are buying into the um, Timmy Cable's that's exactly uh, basketball right. feeling right I I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm being honest. I've been, I've been to three games so far this year for Greenfield, and I'm not sure that these kids on this program are buying into the Timmy Cable's uh, coaching program. If there is something going on where the end will justify what's happening right now, if, this, if, if what he and his staff are doing is setting them up for when you, we get to the other side of the season, we get on towards February, then hey, you know, if, the, if they have figured out what they're doing and the players are buying it at that point, then if you're a Greenfield fan, you can live with what's going on right now. You actually can. Sure, sure. But if they're still floundering, and we're getting close to February vacation. Right now we're on, on holiday break. Right. For February break, that's the end of the season. If they're still floundering, and recent history is they, they've been the ultimate floundering team. L little bits of, oh, they're pretty good. No, they're not that good. Yeah. If they're still doing that five, six weeks from now, then we'll have our answer. Well, you we got to look back at the history, we too. I mean, it, it. it's, it's not just capeless. I mean, when Scott Thayer was there, he had the same problem. A, a lot of times, and I think one of the reasons, one of the problems Greenfield has had historically is they've been killed by school choice. And that's, you know, school choice has reshaped a lot of the landscape of local athletics. Let's face it, there are kids that are going to schools <clears throat> outside of, <clears throat> excuse me, individual, individual towns. And when you can pretty much go anywhere you want to go to school, that's gonna, I mean, it used to be back in our day where you lived was where you went and that was that. And, exactly. and so I think part of what Greenfield's problem has been, has been, you've had kids there that if they had a few more athletes, and hadn't left, it might be a different situation. So I can't totally blame Capeless, but I have to agree, the last couple of seasons, they have been you know, at the Mendoza line or better only because they just don't seem to have a cohesive plan. Just, just disjointed at times. You, yes. you look and you can, see, you can see that there's hope, but it just doesn't congeal. Yeah. And it's if you're a Greenfield fan, it's doubly frustrating because you see that it's not all coming together. They, they never did get a, a, a tournament berth mm -hmm out of the Connor Joy, Kevin Mendez years. And not only that, the coach that they thought they were going to get is going to the state semis consecutive years. Yeah. It's, a, yep. it's, it's, a, it's a doubly bitter pill for them. It is. And you know, when you look at Pioneer, they, they lose Hastings last year and they bring in Scotty Fair. Scotty Fair brings in a more of a more relaxed, um, He's more relaxed this year, guys. I watched them last night. I watched them last year too, guys. Yeah. He's not the he's not the in your face intense coach that he was ten years ago. Yeah. And I honestly think that this group of kids he has, it works with this particular group of kids being able to be 
who he is now. And I got to give Scott credit. I thought he coaches. I thought he coached well last night, but I also thought that he coached pretty well last year too, coming back to Pioneer. I really do. I think that he. I think he even felt more relaxed as a, as a coach. That's I, my opinion. I think you're probably right, and I think part of that comes with maturity, but also part of part of it comes with knowing the personalities of the kids you have. I mean, sometimes a fiery sort of, you know, tear it up I, it, mentality works. It will motivate certain types of teams. But with other teams, it's just flat. I mean, the kids today are different than the kids back in even our day. I mean, anybody who coaches now compared to them will tell you that you almost have to be a part-time psychologist sometimes <laughs> with some Absolutely. of these kids. It's true. And it, it, it becomes more about self-esteem and everything else. But I think Scott certainly has a rhythm with these kids. And it shows by the way they play. Well, I, I think it's a ridiculous notion where you say you, you treat everyone the same. You, you, you don't treat everyone the same. You treat how people deserve to be treated. And Chris is right. You know, you take a look at what kind of kid you're dealing with. Some kid needs that pat on the back and a hug. Another kid needs to get his butt kicked here yep. and there. Yep. And you have to figure out what approach works with what kid. And you have to know what kind of team you're dealing with. When Angelo first took over down in Hadley, it was just a few years before that. They had an 0 and 20 year. They did. Kelly, their pivot man, <laughs> when he was did. a freshman, they went 0 right. and 20. If you're in there in the gym at practice and on game night, screaming and hollering with a young team that hasn't had any success, you're never going to have any success. So that's the time when you're kind of, let's that's go right. fellows, and you guide them. But then, you know, when you reach a point uh, the last two, three seasons, then you know you can really turn the screws on because they're seniors. Uh, you've had them for a while, they know what you're trying to lead them to, then you can let that fly. But you have to be smart about it. You don't forget, Bill Belichick's first season with the Patriots, he was like 1-13. So I mean, sometimes you've got to start from the ground up. But the other thing that's different with today's athlete compared to back in the day, back in our day, is there are parents now that are much more willing to question the coach. Oh, yeah. And they're much more willing to sort of be pseudo-coaches themselves and coach from the cheap seats. And you have to be a... Coaching today requires a special level of patience. I mean, I can think back to my father's day, and, and that was really at the tail, at the, the beginning of when sort of the involved parent dynamic began, and you would drive him nuts. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and if you're an old school fire and brimstone kind of a coach, you're not going to necessarily want to hear from parents second guessing you all the time. And we saw it during football season a lot in, in a lot of these programs. Don Gordon took in the teeth a lot in Frontier with second guessing parents. I mean, it's just it's part of the game. Well, you know what? The parents need to back off because what they're doing is that they're hurting their own kid. And that's what they don't realize is that when you keep pushing the needle and, and, and pushing it in and pushing it in, finally you're going to get to a point where you're going to just hit a nerve. And when you hit a nerve, that's when things explode. And what ends up happening is the kid ends up being punished for that. And, so I don't like it. And beyond that, you also run the risk of driving out some of these coaches. Yeah. Absolutely. Good, Good coaches. coaches. Good, Good coaches. coaches. And yep. That is so dangerous because if you've got a program that has success coaches and the kids generally like that, but the parents are a little not so sure about that, do you really want to lose that coach no. over yeah, over something that in the big picture is not a, a huge consideration? Exactly. No, no, you do not. You know, I want to give a good example of what happens when you replace coaches. And here's a great comparison for you is Pioneer is a great example. You got a guy with Scotty Fair. Scotty Fair has always been a defense coach where, let's be honest, Hastings was an offense coach. He wanted you to score as many points as you could score in a game. This guy, who they got now, wants you to be able to move the ball and make smart choices on your shooting, but wants to make sure that every single time you're back on defense and you're in their pocket. So that is two totally different coaching philosophies. So if you're a kid who's a senior this year, which is Iman, Menard, and Wheeler, those guys have had both of those coaches in their high school career. And that's a big change to go from what you were told when you were younger to what you're being told today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I always remember uh, when Scotty was at Greenfield, in, in a tournament game against a Palmer team, they, they were in the tournament, so they were, they were at least a decent team, if not very good. T 20 points for the game. In a tournament game, 20 points, because it was. The mentality was defense is what's going to lead us where, where we're trying to go. See? And, uh, and, and, yeah, it's a huge departure from, uh, from the Hastings years. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you saw what that defensive strategy did against, against Greenfield the other night. I mean, locked him down to – Less than about 30 something points. I mean, yeah. and that, I don't think you're going to see a lot of high scores this year. I think that's the other thing that is different, and I've seen it covering a couple of Frontier games. I mean, 
you had a 38-37 boys game the other night. Yeah. And, and I'm like, yeah, you know, that's that's unheard of. Do you want to know where the scoring should come this year? The girls from Turner's Falls High School. Yeah. The, girl, the girls from Greenfield. You talk about a team. Now, we've talked a lot about Hopkins, you know, that elusive state title. They bow out to the same team consecutive years, state semifinals, the Maynard Tigers. Greenfield girls, if they don't get to the cage this year, I know they have a truckload of talent coming back uh, uh, next year, but uh, two misses in the postseason. Another, another team that had a winless year not too long ago. It's all, they, they've been rising, 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 but they get knocked out in the Berkshires two years ago. Last year, they lose in their home gym to Mahar. It, I, have to, I have to say it, it's cage or bust. If they don't make the cage this year in the tournament, what a huge disappointment that's going to be. I agree, and I know Chris will too. And that's a good, good segue for us because we are going to go into girls right now. And let's go and let's talk about Greenfield. You know, they have so much talent. And the thing is, is when you look at their top five scorers, okay, you got a freshman in Katie Hazelton, you got a junior in Reagan Hickey, you got Sam Smith, a junior. You got Kirsten Ward, who's a senior, and then you got Lizzie Holland, who's a senior, okay? But out of those girls, I would say that Sam Smith, Reagan Hickey, and Katie Hazelton are going to be your most, they're going to score your most points, okay? Yeah. And they're your underclassmen yeah. and not your two seniors. But Lizzie Holland has totally stepped up this year. And I'm going to tell you right now, Kirsten Ward deserves credit where credit's due. She has really really started off the season very well. And I seem to think her attitude has gotten better this season, too. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's going to make a big difference in her game. I really do. Well, I think she's matured, certainly. And, and of course, you know, we saw Helen come in, and she was she moved into the area. And nobody expected her to, to be the player that she's become, I don't think. You're absolutely right. They're loaded up with talent, and they seem to have a good chemistry. But I agree with Jeff. I mean, the expectations are very, very high this year. Oh, yes. Anything less than a trip to the cage or even possibly contending for a state title is going to be considered a disappointment, which is unfortunate. But they're going to be a fun team to watch down the road. Well, John Hickey did a smart thing in terms of uh, amping up his schedule. Um, you know, resulted in an early season loss. But, you, you know, he is playing some really top-notch programs. That will definitely help. No question about it. It will help with seeding and it will help with uh, dealing with a strong uh, team in the tournament, whether it's from the south of here or on the Berkshires. That, that was very smart on his point. And the one thing that you guys need to know is is that this Hoosick Valley team that they got beat by oh, is work. one of the best programs in the state, guys. Yes. We're talking that, any division, that Allie too. Mandel is yes, just any incredible. division yeah. now. This isn't just their division. This is out of all the girls' divisions in the and, state of Massachusetts. And they, and they did not get smoked. You know, they lost. But, yeah. I mean, they, you know, yeah. they, they, they competed. They competed. So. And they might see them down the road, too. Yeah, it's a very tough program. There's no doubt about it. Hey, let's get ready to the other team, Turner's Falls. Jeff, you brought it up. Yeah. You got Maddie Chimzinski, uh, thousand point scorer, first thousand point girls scorer at Turner's Falls. And I've loved to see how her game has evolved, and I like to see how her demeanor has evolved. We knew it would. I mean, you, you look at you look at kids when they're a freshman or a sophomore, and they become a star right away. And you, know, you can kind of see frustration with teammates, things like that. But man, I mean, I, I've had a blast watching that. Again, we talk about somebody who seems like they've played for 10 years. It's amazing. Yeah, was she playing as an eighth grader? She, she was. She was playing yeah, as an eighth I mean, grader. It's crazy. So it, it, it just phenomenally talented player, and uh, it, it's just it's amazing that we're seeing the last the last few months of her uh, high school basketball career. But I tell you what, she she is now leading a team that is not lacking not, not lacking for talent at all. No, and a matter of fact, they got a good coach too. And coach Wilcox will honestly tell you that uh, he's blown, he, he blew two games this year. He's already came out and said that, I, I missed <laughs> yeah, it, I yeah, missed the boat. Yeah, said and that, yeah. and I'm say, I said, listen, you know, I tell this to my brother, I said, listen, Willie's a good coach. They have a good coach and they're very fortunate. And you know, he takes the blame, but you know what? Sometimes your girls have to do what they need to do and they need to step up their game too. The one person that I just want to see really get more aggressive and make it happen this year is Aaliyah Sanders. I like her game. I like the way she handles the ball for them. But I would love to see Aaliyah. I think she's. I think she could be a double-digit scorer every night. Every night? I do. Okay. All right. I do. I, I, I think she could be... But she's got to take the ball to the basket more. Well, that's another kid that seems like he's been playing forever. I mean, <laughs> watching her forever. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've, I've always liked her game. I always thought that she was a very steady player. I never saw her necessarily as a breakout star, but I think that there's potential there. But she has to really want to step up. And I think, you, you know, Maddie, I think, is the straw that stirs that drink. 
I think Chloe Ellis, also a very, very strong player. I mean, Sanders, it, it's going to depend on how badly she wants it, I think, and, and, and how that fits into Wilcox's game plan. Right. right. These other girls do step up. I mean, obviously opposing teams are, are running different defenses to at least slow down. Maddie. You're not going to stop Maddie Chinzinski in most nights. Right. So they're, you know, they're going to do certain things to kind of uh, minimize the damage. So if, if one of these other girls on a given night can step up, Turner Stalls is going to be tough, yeah. tough and, to and, beat. And you guys watch out because there's a girl who just grew three inches in one year, and that's Taylor Murphy. She's only a freshman. She's got a lot more growing to do. And I think with playing with this group of seniors this year and getting that extra experience from Coach Wilcox is only going to make Taylor a better ball player, I think. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Taylor. There's two freshmen. Uh, there's a freshman for Turner's and a freshman for Greenfield who I think the common thing that I see with them is that they are freshmen, but, but they're, uh, they're unfazed. They, they don't act like it at all. Katie Hazleton, the oh, day that we were there, against Fra you know, she played out of her mind. But she scored 18 points. It was like another night, <laughs> another night at the office yes. for her. And, and yes. I remember during, I, 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 came, uh, I came to know Taylor during the softball season. Yep. Same thing. She, she's going playing on, on a dynastic Turner's Fall softball team with a bunch of seniors and juniors, and she fit right in. Like, like yeah, I'm part yeah. of this team. I, I, I don't know that when I was a freshman, I was yeah. so unfazed by, 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 by that, but they are. Yeah. Well, Reagan Hickey was the same way as, as Hamilton and, and, and Murphy back when she was a freshman. I mean, she was sort of running that offense even back then, and you're like, wow, and this kid's really poised for a ninth grader. And that's, that's what's all. And the only concern I have for Turner's is, and we've seen this at least once or twice this season, is they've got to show up for games. And, and they've got to be come mentally prepared to play. There were a couple of times when that hasn't been the case. I mean, I think at this point, their biggest opponent this year is going to be themselves. It's going to be their, their mental ability to stay in, into every game and stay as intense as they need to be to be competitive. Well, you know, the, the Greenfield girls, a lot of these Greenfield basketball players, it's the same crew that, uh, that won the Western Mass field hockey title. But during the regular season, they got caught by a Mohawk team yeah, earlier in the did. fall. Yeah, they and did. it was an attention getter, so it just goes to show, even these great teams, if, if, you're, if, if you're not prepared that given night, you can go down. That can also be a good thing. You know, in the grand scheme of thing, and it, it really was for Greenfield field hockey. Yeah. Well, when you get to the postseason, it's one and done, and we've seen this how many times in our time, our times covering these games. You know, the best team can come out. I'm thinking about Mohawk and Holyoke Catholic. Yes. Although back in the Ed Carter that days. That was an unbelievable. That kid went off that day yeah. for Holyoke Catholic. And you know what? He, Ray, Ray, Ray Wickes. Wickes. And they he punched went. Mohawk oh right in the God. mouth in their own building. On the road. And we were Bay talking, was Mohawk great. is a Western Mass title, yeah, title contender. Yeah. I agree. So they were. But to learn a lesson like that early in the season is better than yeah. learning it on the first night of the playoffs. Yeah. I remember Coach Hickey turning as red as a yes. tomato <laughs> in that game. <laughs> Because they could not stop that kid. Not, yeah. It's like something out of a Mike Judge cartoon. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> and when, when Hick used to lose it, man, it yeah. was scary. I mean, it was scary. Yeah. 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 You're, you're, you're worried yeah. about his health. Yeah, sure, yeah. He's worried about his health. Is he yeah. going to survive this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of Mohawk, and let's slide right into this one. Um, very tough season this year yeah. for head coach uh, Larissa Miner, whose dad, who's always been the bench uh, help for her. Um, Chuck Miner going through a really tough time right now, guys. And uh, I'll tell you, Dana Farber's been special to him. And the people in this community have just really outpoured uh, a lot of support to that family. But this girl's got some pretty good athletes, though. And really, they really do. If you really think about Mohawk, Ashley Reynolds is a really decent player. She's not. She, she's good. What about the Poplowski girls with Emma Grace and yep. Ashley Walker? They got some talent. The problem is, is they are just still getting... They're, they're like two pieces away from having the puzzle. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely, they're yeah. Just no, a couple pieces away from having a puzzle that could be really good for them. And that's, I, that's I hate what, to say you know, it, but they're it, short. it goes in cycles. I mean, yeah. I think, I mean in a couple of years, we're talking about the, the juggernaut that is the Mohawk Warriors girls basketball team. <laughs> so, I mean, I think, I think it's a rebuilding time. And you're right, they've got good athletes, but you can have great athletes, but it takes a coach to make a team. Right. It takes a special kind of ability to bring all those elements together and, pro and put a cohesive game plan together that they buy into. Yep. And that's where the challenge is going to be. But I think that Mohawks, 
best days are coming in yep. terms of girls' basketball. And I honestly think that their girls' basketball team this year, you guys will notice, they will be better this year yeah. than they were last year. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I think just to kind of break through, they, you know, one victory last year, just to break through, I think, then, then you get on a roll. Then you really start to believe in yourself. Yes. It's, it's tough to go out there and, and, and keep hearing from your coach in the locker room after a game about the moral victory. Mm. But you know what happened. You weren't good enough to win. Right. And then it happened again and again and again. It happened 19 times. We lost. Yeah. Once you start to piece together a winning streak or, or win two or three or, or, or even go through a, a six-game stretch where you go three and three, that, then you can start getting some momentum going. Yeah. Well, another team that um, I think is going to do okay this year, and they got a, they got a really good senior uh, leader who can shoot the ball, is Amber Merritt, who is from the Franklin County Tech School, Coach Knightley's team. Yeah. And uh, he's got Brooke Adams. Uh, he's also got Jocelyn Crowning Shield, and Jordan Herbert is uh, also out there. And those girls, I'll tell you, not bad. Not a bad little program right there. Uh, but this Amber Merritt, boy, she can shoot the ball. That girl can shoot. And with the league that they're in, I honestly think that they got a good chance of getting back to the tournament. Yeah, I mean, you, they, they've been more than representative in recent years. When tournament time comes... They, that's they, our biggest problem. That, that's they, that's they the get, biggest problem. They get to the dance, but they just can't, they can't waltz their way right. into a second rounder, you know? Right. And that makes it tough, you know? Well, it takes a little bit... I mean, again, you don't know what's going to happen down the stretch, but it, it takes a special kind of intensity to get over that hump in playoff time. And, you know, there are great teams that go in thinking that they're just going to bruise through the first round and they get punked by a team like this. Yeah. A team that's yes. young, that's hungry, that maybe is thinking, you know what, you're not so slick, we can take you out. I mean, I think Franklin Tech, again, like Moloch, is poised with a lot of good young players to be a real force kind of moving forward. Yeah. You know, and another team that's really young, and Chris, you know this because of the FCAT, you guys carrying it, let's talk about Frontier. Yeah. You know, they got Ella Dean, uh, they got Marie Diamond, they got Amelia Sobieski, uh, but let's remember, Amelia's only a freshman. Right. I mean, she's very young. What about Marie Diamond? She's only a sophomore. I mean, he, I talked, I had a nice long talk with their coach, and we had a really good conversation about the team. And he said to me, he said, you know what, Bobby? He said, I have a really young group of kids. But I said to him, I said, you're a great coach, Marty. You're a really good coach. And I think that with the group that you have, you can only make them better. I really believe that. And I think that there's some good things that will be down the road for Frontier. I, I do believe that. Ella Dean has always sort of been a force since she was a freshman. I mean, a great little shooting guard, can shoot the three really well. Um, Marie Diamond is a player that was largely an, an off-the-bench player the last couple of years. She was sort of like a sixth woman. And you'd see her in the first, come in in the first two minutes and – and, but I think this year, this is a, 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 going to be a good test for her to sort of play a little bit more, maybe start a little bit more, and get some more looks at the basketball. But she was always a very, very solid player. Frontier's program is always, I think, pretty consistent. I think if they, if they have a, a weakness, it's that they just don't always finish, uh, finish their shots, especially late in the game. They did a different this year. I know that they had a tough one against Greenfield, but everybody's going to have they a tough did. one. They did have a tough but, day against Greenfield. But, but I will tell you what, though. The thing that impressed me about them, they, they took the fight to the Waves. They did. The first they they did. took them for a while, and Greenfield went on that long run. But they, Bobby, you'll remember, they were running their offense that night. It, wasn't, it wasn't this throwing no. the ball away, disjointed. They yeah. ran their offense. They just couldn't they, make any shots. And they got shut down, Jeff. We talked about how they, <laughs> when they went low, Jeff, they were not able to get easy baskets. Right. They had to make everything from outside, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If the yeah. shots had fallen, it would have been <laughs> oh, absolutely. It, it, it obviously would have been a game. But yeah. I, I like what they were trying to do. Yeah. They, in all likelihood, they were not going to defeat Greenfield on their home court, and they didn't. But I like that they actually ran the offense that they wanted to. They just got beat by a better team. But hey, listen, Marty, he won at Hampshire with the boys early nineties. Wow, yeah, yeah, early nineties. Yeah. And, and he won and he won and he won in the early two thousands with all those boys in the mid in the mid. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, he's I, legit. I would say keep, it, keep an eye on <laughs> yeah, the girls inside your field because I, I think agree. they're gonna be back sooner than people yeah. think. And I'm pretty sure this is Marty's last year as A D. I don't know if he's gonna continue coaching. I don't think he's going to be AD. I think. Right, right. Okay. I think so, but yeah. uh, he's, they're always competitive. They're always fun to watch. I love calling their games, and I love the fact that we're able to, to call as many of them as we are because, you know, I think, and I, I want to give a nod to our, our director, Kevin Murphy. You know, 
he's put together a really solid package of programming. And you can watch all these games on YouTube at the FCAT Media page. And the girls' basketball games sometimes get more hits than the boys. Because yeah. they, they're, they're an exciting team to watch, and they do a yeah. lot of good things out there. Oh, it's a, it's a great presentation. I know, uh, Kevin, when I, when I do a game, when we simulcast with Bear Country, uh, Kevin will send me the link, and I watch it, and wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's really good. Well, real proud you, Kevin's done a wonderful job, yeah. and, and I know that when we sat out in the elements there in the basketball oh, and the football God. game, and, and that guy was there for us, and he was, he, he was truly there for us that day. It was a tough day for us to overweight fellas but you know he cared a lot about me a guy that he barely even knows and it meant a lot to me and I send out a lot to Kevin for being able to be the professional that he is and the product that you guys have been able to put on at the FCAT has been special and yeah. having what we have each and every week for these kids is something that no other place right. around here does well, so it's I guys like you who have really been able to add to making this special and I really am serious as the that. director of that station I can unabashedly say as much of, of all the stuff we do this sports stuff I think is the best produced and the most reacted to I mean if, if you look at YouTube hits alone I mean we get more hits on the sports than anything else and that's because it's a really put together product from the graphics to the the quality of the video to the audio I mean you're yeah. not going to find a better a better, better presentation of high school sports I don't think anywhere in this commonwealth and I'm very proud of it, and I'm very proud of Kevin. He's done almost all that work. Yeah, so. and that just goes to show you how well that he does his job and how well that we're continuing to hopefully make those kids and parents and grandparents happy each and every week with the things that we do. Hey, how about that team up there in good old Northfield? Pioneer. Pioneer girls. You know, they have a very young group of girls. So people said, oh, you know, how come they're not? They lost a lot of players last year. But you know, Coach Meg has lost a lot of players yeah, from last but, year. Yeah, but, but Meg. Experience. But, but Meg, the girls that came back, I mean, oh yeah, they played. I yeah, mean, they're not. She's not breaking. No, into you group. got your Steph Sokoval, who's a sophomore, who got some playing time. Olivia Rowe is like only her. a junior. Like she her. is going to be tough this She's year. Good. What about Paige Lothman, eighth grader last year, now a freshman, running the point for them? She's got a really good eye for the court. I like this Pioneer team, guys. Well, just a good point, and that is that Pioneer is unfortunate. Not only do they have a great coach. But they've got a, a lot of players that have gotten significant playing time. And, you know, when you have a lot of senior-laden teams, the younger kids don't always get into games as much unless they're out, you know, in front by 20 or 30 points in a given night. Yep. But Pioneer's been lucky because they've got younger players that have gotten a lot of varsity experience. And now, you, you know, Olivia Rowe is only a junior. Again, one of these kids, it seems like we've been calling her name for years. <laughs> it's true, because she started uh, so young. I think that Pioneer's got a solid program, especially on the girls' side. I'm a big Meg Burrington fan. I think she's one of the best coaches in Western Mass. Yep, yep. I'm a fan of hers too, guys. Yeah, they're, well, they're a I fun team to watch. And I think if Olivia Rowe, if she comes to recognize how good she really is, because sometimes these kids they don't they don't quite mm. believe how good. They I are. think she's really if good. She starts to realize just how good she is and develops a little more of that eye of the tiger yep. mentality. She, I mean, she's already really good, but that'll just take yeah. it up to the next level. And you know who's really stepped up her game this year, guys, early is Steph Skull. Yeah. Uh, she's done a wonderful job. And, of course, it's sort of hard because when she was younger, everything was her sister. Yeah. Jessica this. Exactly. Jessica that. Yeah. Just this. You know? But you know what? Steph has stepped up. And I had a long talk with her dad last night. Um, Mikey was at the uh, game with, with uh, the Greenfield Pioneer game last yeah. night. And we were talking about the growth of Steph. And, boy, she's even grown about two and a half inches from last year, too. Well, she's got that she's great got, basketball yeah, mentality. Exactly. They, they have great skill and clearly is a student of the game, moves the ball very, very well. She's going to be a, a force. And uh, let's go right into it. We got a team that last year ended up uh, doing very well. They beat Greenfield. They do got a couple of really big stars that are coming back this year for them, and that's Marhar, guys. Let's get right into it. They got Jasmine Vatour. They also have uh, Maeve Powell, uh, Kiana Riley, and what about Sam Rowe? I mean, those girls are really good ball players, guys. Yeah, they, uh, you know, great run for them. Uh, Ka Cassie's gone now. Cassie was a was huge, a yeah, lot of huge. fun to watch. Absolutely. But Mahar, yeah, they're, I don't, I don't, yeah, they, I, they, I think they lost their two top scorers, and then they lost the girl that actually had been injured. But I don't think they're going anywhere. I think I think they've sort of settled right near the top. I yeah, think. I mean, I maybe. Do too. I mean, I, I think, some, I, I I think do people too. think they're gonna there's gonna be this precipitous drop. I, I don't see it. I don't either. Well, they've got a good inside out game with Powell in the middle, and they've got Rowe on the outside, and, and they move the ball very very well. And like I said, they punched Greenfield in the mouth. So I, I think you're right. I think that they're gonna be heard from in the postseason. Yeah. 
Don't really know much, guys, about Athol, really. I don't know if you guys do or not. Uh, they have uh, Taylor Cleveland, who uh, has been scoring a lot of points in the early part of this year. I know um, Haley Bigwood. I remember her from last yeah. year. And really good, really good pitcher, too, on their softball team. Let me tell you, Bigwood is really good. And uh, also a girl by the name of Destiny Wrigley, who's also putting up some points for Athol Girls Basketball. Well, on the night of February 2nd, I'm not sure what uh, night of the week that is. I suspect it might be a Friday. Uh, there's going to be uh, an Athol Turner's Falls doubleheader on Bear Country. The girls game first, the boys game second. So we'll get a chance to see the Red Raiders both sides that night. Okay. Coaches versus Cancer. Oh, they perfect. put that together at Turner's Falls High School, and Bear Country will be there. So. Oh, that is wonderful. Pretty sure it's a that. Thursday, and yeah, that's going to be fun to watch. It. That'd be great. And you talk about Athol Girls basketball again, great tradition. Um, and they, they're a bit of a wild card, but I wouldn't look past anybody that comes out of Athol in the girls' division. They've always had good teams. So there you go. We uh, gave you a nice recap on all these kids uh, for basketball. I'd like to spend the next 10 minutes as we wind down our show here on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. Jeff Terrell, Chris Collins, I'm Bobby C. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, putting this together for us, my friend. And we usually do this in the GCTV studios, but today we're at Hubie's Restaurant and Tavern right here on Avenue Way in Turner's Falls. Thank you so much to Sean Hubert and his wife, Lynn, for inviting us here today to be able to do this with you. But let's talk about Greenfield High School hockey. Franklin, wow. Franklin County hockey. Franklin County the, hockey. The Franklin now. County Green Wave. I That's right. Now. The Franklin so, County Green Wave. Yeah. Well, um, Chris. Listen, man, the rink's named after your dad, all right? It's the Collins Moylan Arena. Um, dad, I'm going to tell you right now, he's probably saying sad in one way, but cool in another. And that's what I mean by that, is that sad that we don't have enough participating players to keep as many teams in as possible, but good in the fact that this Franklin County Hockey Association that has been the base for all these kids since they were little. Now they're at an age where they're high school kids that have grown up with each other, playing against each other. Now they can share the experience together. Well, I can say that the, originally, the Franklin County Hockey Association was largely a Greenfield-based kind of a thing. A few years back, uh, the board of directors of that organization wanted to sort of spread the message out to the whole county. And so what you ended up having was a lot of kids from communities outside of Greenfield took up the sport of hockey. Not an easy game to play. It's very expensive in terms of the equipment and the ice time and everything. But it worked. And so what you have is you have not as many Greenfield, quote, central kids, but a lot of countywide kids. So it makes sense at this point in history to have this cooperative program. Now, every high school in Franklin County is under this Greenfield umbrella. And man, they're tearing it up. They are. I they've lost to being yet. Coach, Coach Adam Bouchard's got to be <laughs> really happy right now with what's going on with this team. And I'll tell you, they're not just winning by one goal. They're, they're winning big. They're winning 4-1, to one, five, 6 to 2 They beat Gardner 8 nothing. Do, yeah, do, yeah, do we know what the school, the geographic breakdown is? Obviously, there's more there's more Greenfield kids, but there's a, there's a couple of kids from the South County. I think a couple from Turner's. I think there's almost, almost 10 or something kids from Frontier. Alone, yeah, I think. but I wanted to, you guys to know that they have three teams. Yeah. They have their varsity, they have JV, and they now have for the first time in the history of their team a practice squad. Yeah, yes. Good. So that is pretty much what we could call as our middle school, as we would call it, getting ready for the next level. Some of those kids, if they work hard enough on the practice squad, they could maybe move up into a varsity spot, but otherwise, they're gonna just keep getting the more experience. What I, what I haven't heard, which is surprising to me, is many complaints from the Springfield area teams. Because, you know, there are some in Springfield that I probably look at this saying, well, Greenfield's gonna have a county-wide cooperative team. I mean, we only have Chicopee as kids from Chicopee, and, and Long Meadow has kids from Long Meadow. And, the truth of the matter is that the Valley teams, the lower Valley teams, have been using us for a punching bag for the better part of a quarter century. So I, for one, have no problem at all kicking some butt down in the Valley. Uh, but there, there are people that will complain, you know, it's, it takes away from things, you know, you have to sacrifice the Upton Cup. But the truth of the matter is, this is where we are now. This is no longer just a Greenfield game, it's a county-wide game. And, and I have no problem with one Greenfield team reflecting. And I think it's wonderful that they you know, have a place to play. Hockey is very different than most of the other sports for, for many reasons. It's an incredibly expensive sport. It and is very in, expensive. Uh, getting ice time, you know, when, when we had uh, Turner's Falls had their program, getting ice time, uh, 
the scheduling and just if you lost a couple of kids, you're, you're going to spend some time at the end of the line, and that's what happened over in Tennis Falls. No, I think it's wonderful. They have a place to play. I, I live in the neighborhood of, of Greenfield High School, College Mill Arena. I walk my dog over at Shattuck Park all the time, and that place is hopping all it the is. time. You go over there, and what I've noticed is when I look in the parking lot and I see uh, window decals in the cars, I, I see the Pioneer paw print, the Panther paw print. Now I see a Frontier Red Hawk logo. I, so obviously, the, these are it's Franklin County Hockey Association, and all these kids. If this keeps going the way it's going, and I, I, I tend to think that this is the new reality, these kids are going to play together from whatever the lowest level. I'm not sure what the moniker is. The lowest level, all the way through. The best of the kids will stay together. Hopefully, play all the way through high school. They're going to be a good team every single year, I would think. But this could be fun though, because it reflects in what I love about this more than anything. Sorry, guys, there's my microphone here. Um, what I like about this more than anything, guys, and I want to give credit where credit's due, is the fact that the Greenfield Hockey Association group of parents who have put volunteer time into getting these kids to be good skaters and to be able to compete, and they are competing, Chris, like you said, as a punching bag down when they go to the Olympia down in West Springfield, and that's where they do a lot of their games and tournaments. Now they can get the whole group of their organization to be one as a bunch of young adults and these kids can go out and be a group of kids that can be able to have friendships to last forever. Well, I really like well, it. Going back to Jeff's point, it's not, not a, at all unlike what you see in Montague and Greenfield where they have kids basketball programs. These kids play together as youngsters at Pop Warner football. It's the same dynamic, only in this case you've got kids from all across the county come from the FCHA, CHA ranks and they wind up on the same hockey team. I mean, it, that's all it is. It, it makes perfect sense, and, and I'm not sure why it wasn't something that was suggested long ago, but we are here now. And, and I think uh, I think yeah. of my dad, and my, and my dad, you know, he was not a big fan of club teams. Yeah. I mean, because routinely what would happen is the Springfield Olympics would rob us of our best Greenfield players, guys like Jeff Sullivan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah playing for the picks. picks. Yes. He's yes. playing for Greenfield High School. God knows what kind of damage that guy would have oh. done oh. in a Greenfield High School uniform, but that's the way it works. No different from school choice. So I think that the time is now. I would love to see a right division championship come home to Greenfield. I just wondered, we're sitting, in, we're sitting at Hubie's in front of the, the Turner's scoreboard and all these Turner's Falls jerseys. I'm just wondering about a Turner's hockey player wearing the green and white. I mean, that, that, I know. That, that's a little weird. I know. That's a little but, weird. And I, and I will tell you that if there's one guy that I do feel bad for, and I want to say this, and I really do, is I do feel bad for Darren Lenoise because he really, really did put a lot of heart and he tried, tried like hell. Like he yeah. did. Either you and you know, and some, he, I mean, he, yeah, I know, exactly. But you know what? That's a guy, and if you and if you know him and his brother Ron, and you know Jingles, his dad, and the family, hockey has been a big part of that family, Chris. And you know, going back to when you were that you know, family has been involved with that organization, the FCHA, is almost as long as my parents were. Exactly, it was a core cool so, bunch of group of parents. That, that says a lot. That, that says a lot, and that's why so, I yeah. think you got a little bit of hurt going on in there. No, and I, I and I get it, and I get it, I really do. But I just want to say, guys, it was awesome to be able to get together. Yeah. Uh, congratulations so far to Coach Adam Bouchard. Yeah, I was talking to Corey Lovett. He's liking it, too. Hey, let me tell you. you know, we, we, actually, actually, tell you, we should actually, Kevin and I have been talking. We might be doing some of those games for TV. So oh, that would be You awesome. might be seeing some Greenfield High School hockey on uh, FCAT Media's YouTube page at some point. That would be wonderful because you guys have that opportunity to do it, and I think that they would love it, especially when you got a lot of kids that are from that area that are playing for this team. It only makes sense, you know. And, Jeff, you know, you're the sports director for Bear Country, and the things that you've been able to bring on to the, you know, the scene we last year were able to bring back, which has been nice the last two years, honestly, bringing back girls softball even. That's, yeah, that's something great. that we never were able to do before. Uh, having a nice, big, solid program for basketball, nice, big, solid program for football. Um, having a station that still does local high school sports in this area is very rare. Well, very rare. We'll keep it going with, because we get the sponsorship for it. So we're gonna we're gonna ride the strain as long as we can. Well, thank you so much, Jeff Terrell from Bear Country ninety five point three. Chris Collins, he's from the FCAP, but he's also on the broadcast team for high school basketball, and I uh, get a chance to fill in with these guys as well. And I'm Bobby C., and I want to say thank you for being a part of the Franco County Varsity Sports Report. want to once again thank our sponsors, and I want to thank Sean Hubert for having us here at Hubie's right here on Avenue A in Turner's Falls. Also by Denny's Pantry, located on 
Berniston Road in Greenfield, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant, Routes 5 and 10 in Berniston, Lisa Albert, Albert Hearing Services, 33 Waddell Street in Greenfield. Make sure to join us because we'll be on the FCAT, we'll also be on GCTV, and look for us on Facebook as well. And yes, the winter season has begun for high school basketball. Have a great week, everyone.